Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Postrans to allocate sales receipts or payments to outstanding invoices within Xero using Excel. Um, so if you've got hundreds and it takes you hours to enter all the receipts one by one, then this could be the answer to saving a lot of time. So here we are in Xero. We can see here our awaiting payment uh, invoices. So this is all the invoices that are outstanding. We're sent to customers and we're waiting for payments. See the invoice number, the amount outstanding, etc, etc. So let's go to uh, Excel and of course we've got post transfer zero already loaded and uh, we just click on there and what we're going to do is we're going to access all the examples that come with post trans by pressing the examples button on the toolbar. Now I'm going to just type in here payments and you can see here it says import and match sales receipts and payments so I'm just going to double click on that there's another example there that I'm going to cover in another video which actually takes in the minimum of information such as the invoice number and the amount and the payment reference and matches it all magically so if you had an external system um, and you need to match it off automatically that's what that one does so now we've gone into one of our Excel templates. Now there's a complete training course on our website of how the template can be customized and the structure can be changed. But effectively we have a series of tags, some in what we call the header and some on row 28, which designates what's in each column of the template. Some of these are required, some of these are not required. So you can rearrange, change the order, hide things, do all sorts of weird and wonderful things, all covered in the training course. And this yellow portion here is the bit that we're going to enter the manual information in, such as how much they paid and what the reference was that we're going to reconcile in our bank account. Let's just hide that tag and just make it look a little bit prettier. So before I uh, extract the information, let's just discuss uh, some of these options at the top here. The first one is the bank account we're currently using. Now, Postrans has a thing called in-cell searching, and if I press space and tab out, it will display all the available options or values for that one cell. Um, so we've got two bank accounts as such, uh, and they're both in GBP because I'm in the UK. Now, if, if I was dealing in US dollars and I had sales invoices or receipt, uh, so yeah, sales invoices outstanding in US dollars or euros, then I would change that to the euro or the US dollar bank account, in which case, when we come to it in a minute, we're going to extract all those invoices, they would all appear. So effectively, each sheet is set to a bank account and deals with the transactions that match that bank account's currency. So if you were dealing in multiple currencies, what you could do is just right click down here, copy that sheet, change the bank account, save the template, and you would then have two templates, each for each individual bank account and currency. Next option is manual, set to manual. Um, this really comes into play when we do the file matching because you're allowed to match by invoice or the external reference. But anyway, that's covered in the next video. Next, we have the tolerance. So I'm going to press space and tab away. So effectively, we can have one or two in here as the setting. One means that it will only allow you to match exact values. And two is exact or anything less, which I think is probably the most appropriate option. We can also set um, this value here to flag as reconciled in the bank account. So if we're bringing that in and we want it all reconciling, which we possibly would do, then that's the option we use. Next is receipt date. If it's not filled in, it will use today's date. And effectively, you're setting the date of all receipts we're about to post. Now, there is a tag and it can be added, so you could set that for each individual receipt. But the idea of this is to do things as quick as possible. You don't want to be typing in separate dates, surely. So we've seen the uh, list of outstanding invoices. Let's bring them into Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the Extract button on the toolbar. It's going to ask me whether that's exactly what I want to do. Yes, 
because what it's just done is it's just cleared that template down so any other values in there would have been deleted and it's written down uh, all the outstanding invoices and you can see in the match column is actually the invoice number followed by the account code if there was account codes name due date number of days which is a formula uh, what's that that's the invoice number again and then we've got the outstanding amount so we've got a whole series of receipts is sitting in front of us so what can we do well this first invoice here this one here we could say okay i'm going to allocate 50 pound and the reference is this i'm just going to type a reference in there so the first one we've, alloc we've part allocated is outstanding 180 pound i've allocated 50 with that reference this one i'm going to actually not put a value in here and what post trans will do is it will allocate the full amount to that um, payment so the full amount the full outstanding 144 pound will be posted as a payment and allocated to that invoice and down below here i'm going to type in another reference and i'm going to press an Put an X in the second column because what they've done is they've they've sent in uh, a payment of two hundred and eighty eight pound to pay those two invoices off. So again, instead of having to type the reference in and the amount, I can just pop that in there. But if I said okay, well they've paid one hundred and forty four pound off and they've actually paid twenty pound of that one, then that's what I would type in. I'm just going to put that back to zero. Got basically there three payments. We've also got another column here to actually add a note. Uh, hi, I've oh, I've paid this spelling mistake probably. So what's going to happen there is it's going to actually add a note to the payment in zero. So let's press import. And Post Trans is just asking me, do I want to reread the debtors list? So we did the extract a few seconds ago, and it's retained the debtors list in the memory. Do we want to update that? Uh, well, nothing's changed, so there's no point. You know, if I'd left the computer for two hours or something, maybe for some reason I would want to uh, refresh the memory. And this is just the memory it's going to use to allocate, because effectively what it's done is it's retained those outstanding invoices. And as it scans down that sheet, it's going to look for the invoice number in its memory, and uh, use that to allocate off the payments and invoices with the receipts. Let's press no. So that's going to go down. There's the first one that is found. So there's my reference. There's the account. So it's going to pay off £50, allocate that to that invoice. Partial allocation. I'm happy with that. So let's just posted that one off. And now we've come down to this one. 144 pound if i'm happy i can say don't ask again and it will process everything in the sheet indeed if i go up to setup there's a setting in system settings which suppresses this confirmation depending on your needs you may wish to suppress it and we've now come down to the line where i've allocated off two invoices and we can post that one also so that's three transactions, there's three receipts we've posted. So now if we go back to zero, um, we should now see, what have we got here? Some are outstanding and some are not outstanding. So test invoice three should now have 50 pound allocated to it, which it does. Let's just go in there. There we go, 50 pound payment with our reference there's our reference a matching reference splendid so that's matching that reference there uh, then we've got test invoice one which will now be fully paid so that will presumably be in the paid section yeah so let's search for that let's just pop that invoice reference in there cool and uh yeah so that's paid 144 now i think we did actually put against the payment a note so if we go down here there's the reference uh three seven something three five nine and there's the uh note with a slight spelling mistake excellent 
And I don't think I need to show the third. Well, okay, so let's should we show the, show the third? Let's. Uh, the third one was test invoice for. Okay, so that's test invoice four. That's that invoice. So there's the payment, two hundred and eighty-eight pound, paying off those two invoices. Beautiful. Everything worked as I'd expected.